We Are Christians on page 586, 586. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Good evening. Today we're very happy to welcome Father Charles. Father Charles is a priest from uh, Uganda who is here to share with us about a school that he runs there as part of our annual mission appeal. So it's a joy to have Father Charles with us, and let's give him a warm welcome. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault, Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father, amen. Let us pray. O God, who show the light of your truth to those who go astray, so that they may return to the right path, give all who for the faith they profess are accounted Christians the grace to reject whatever is contrary to the name of Christ, and to strive after all that does it honor. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, just as from the heavens the rain and snow come down and do not return there till they have watered the earth, making it fertile and fruitful, giving seed to the one who sows and bread to the one who eats, 
so shall my word be that goes forth from my mouth. My word shall not return to me void, but shall do my will, achieving the end for which I sent it. The word of the Lord. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, I consider that the sufferings of this present time are as nothing compared with the glory to be revealed for us. For creation awaits with eager expectation the revelation of the children of God. For creation was made subject for, to futility, not of its own accord, but because of the one who subjected it in hope that creation itself would be set free from slavery to corruption and share in the glorious freedom of the children of God. We know that all creation is groaning in labor pains, even until now. And not only that, but we ourselves, who have the first fruits of the Spirit, we also groan within ourselves as we wait for adoption, the redemption of our bodies. The word of the Lord.
The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. On that day, Jesus went out of the house and sat down by the sea. Such crowds gathered around him, and he got into a boat and sat down, and the whole crowd stood around the shore. And he spoke to them at length in parables, saying, A sower went out to sow, and as he sowed, some seed fell on the path, and the birds came and ate it up. Some fell on rocky ground, where it had little soil. It sprang up at once because the soil was not deep, and when the sun rose, it was scorched and withered for lack of roots. Some seed fell among thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked it. But some seed fell on rich soil and produced fruit, a hundred or sixty or thirtyfold. Whoever has ears ought to hear the gospel of the Lord. Good evening. As he said at the beginning of Mass, I am Father Charles from Uganda, Africa, and I have been now 30 years a priest. I got an opportunity to study here in this country. I studied at St. Ambrose University in Iowa from 2007 up to 2009, where I was doing a master's in education administration. After my studies at St. Ambrose, I went back to Uganda, to my home country, and I started a school in my village. At the moment, the school is about 14 years old, and at the moment, we have 1,700 students in that school, from the seventh grade up to the twelfth grade. I have come along with some newsletters. I've put a few on this side. So please, if you want to learn more about this school, when you are getting out, please get a copy. And should they get finished, I still have some other few I can still give. I am very happy to be here in Quincy for the first time. And thank you for the welcome. Thank you so much for talking to me, and thank you. I feel at home. I want to thank in a special way your pastor, Father Leo. I have not got an opportunity to see him, but I have met Father Zachary. Yeah, thank you so much for welcoming me. I've really, the few hours I've spent here, I have felt at home. I bring you greetings from my Archbishop. I came from Uganda when you were celebrating your independence in July. July 4th, that's when I came here. And I sat with my Archbishop, His Grace Lambert. He's the one actually who sent me, he arranged with your Bishop that I come and I talk to you about the pastoral, the, the, what is going on in our diocese. So he sends you greetings. And he told me to share with you two things. The school, as he said, is what I'm doing, but I'm here representing the Archbishop, and this is what he told me to tell you. The first is this. On the 28th of next month, the Archbishop is going to ordain 24 young men, 24, two, four young men. I don't know how many you are going to have in this diocese, but back home in one diocese, one day is going to ordain 11 deacons who will be ordained priests. And then 13 seminarians 
will be ordained deacons. And this has been happening year after year, year after year. We don't ordain, he doesn't ordain less than 20 young men, some to the priesthood and others to diaconate. So he told me to share with you that because of this overwhelming number of young people who are responding to this call of God, the call to become priests, he decided in his diocese to start what he called a vocation center, a center where these young boys can go, get the first training so that they can become priests. The vocations in Uganda, in Africa, we lack other things. But at the moment, those who are responding to become priests, the number is simply overwhelming. I got an opportunity to teach in the major seminaries. The major seminaries are all full. They are full. People apply, and some are not even taken up. But the vocations in Uganda are really growing. We thank God for it, and we pray that this, uh, resp this, uh, this court, the priesthood, many other young men hear it, and they respond to it. Um, he said in this uh, vocations center, at the moment which he's putting up, he lacks, at the moment, he lacks a hall, which is building, where young people can gather and listen to retreats, and also some accommodation. So I'm here to appeal to you on behalf of the Archbishop, to support him, support him as he constructs this vocation center. He told me to share with you that in his estimates, a hall which will be used for retreats will be costing around 40,000 US dollars and then for accommodation, about 30,000. Then the other thing is to share with you that those who could be willing could take on some seminarians and sponsor them. Because these seminarians study for eight, eight years. After the 12th grade, they do eight years, four of philosophy and three, no, four also of theology. But during that course, they need some people to sponsor them. So he told me that I put this before you. If you feel touched, you could say, no, let me sponsor a seminarian who wants to become a priest. And by the way, these young people, while they are being trained in Uganda, they are for the whole church. I know there is a priest from my diocese who is serving in this diocese, Father Alfred. He got trained in Uganda, but now he's serving here. So this, the, the, the priesthood is universal. So um, I'm appealing to you on behalf of the Archbishop that whatever you can, please support us so that the Center for Seminarians can be completed. The second thing that he asked me to share with you, he said, please do it, and do it slowly so that people can understand. He said, invite the people to come over and visit my diocese. The Archbishop invites you, those who feel they want to come over to Africa, please get in touch with us. He says he will provide transport from the airport to his diocese, give you free accommodation and free meals. So there is an opportunity. Should you be considering coming to Africa, please get in touch with me or get in touch with our friend so that you can come and visit and see how God has really blessed you. Uganda has the best weather. That's what I promise you. Here, when I was studying at St. Ambrose, I said I will never come back during winter. In Uganda, we don't have winter. The weather is always about 60, and with, it's, it's not humid, so it's just perfect. So please respond. Those who are willing, respond to the invitation of the Archbishop and come over and see how Uganda looks like. Allow me to share with you only one thing about today's readings. As I read through the readings, this thought came to my mind that God created all of us for a purpose. 
We are all here for a purpose, and the purpose is to bear fruit. We are not here for nothing, no. God created us, he put us here to bear fruit. The first reading was talking about God's word coming and returning, having done what he was sent to do. The word of God is Jesus Christ. He also came here with a mission, to save us from our sins, which he did and fulfilled very well. We need to emulate Jesus and also know that we have a mission. And that mission, again, as I said, it is to bear fruit. The fruit that comes from love, loving God and loving our neighbor, and also making a difference in the lives of the people that we encounter. I intend to go back to Uganda in September. At the beginning of September, I will be going back to where I work. I will keep you in my prayers. I will also tell the students there to pray for you. I will tell the Archbishop what I have seen, how you have received me, and be assured of our prayers. We shall particularly pray that God's light may shine upon your path so that you may bear fruits that please God. Thank you for supporting the Archdiocese of Mbarara, and may God bless you all. Thank you for listening. As a slight addendum to Father's homily this evening, in your pews you will see a small white envelope at the end of the pews. If you feel called to contribute to uh, our mission appeal this year, uh, you can uh, place your money, uh, cash or check, in that envelope and place it in the collection basket this week, or you can bring it back uh, to church next week and drop it in the basket uh, then as well. Having just come from the seminary not very long ago, I can assure you that seminarians eat a lot. So Father Charles, I'm sure, needs lots of help to build this facility uh, in, in his diocese. So please do feel um, generous in your response and, and provide uh, for, their, for their needs. As he mentioned, there is a priest from his diocese who serves in our diocese here. So this truly is a global church, and the needs of, of theirs are really the needs of ours. It all goes in a collective. So uh, please do contribute as you see fit. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He is sent into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. In confidence and in hope, we place these our petitions at the seat of Christ's mercy. <clears throat> For the church, may God give us the grace to sow seeds of goodness and tend the soil of the earth. We pray to the Lord. For leaders in government, May God grant them hearts of understanding and conversion to the gospel life. We pray to the Lord. For farmers and all who work to grow and produce the food we eat, we pray to the Lord. 
for the community gathered here. May God open our eyes and ears so we can hear his voice in all we do. We pray to the Lord. For those who have died, including Priscilla Morrison, who passed away this past week, that they may know the glory and the splendor of heaven, we pray to the Lord. For all of our special intentions, especially for the intention of this Mass, Roger Frankenhoff, we pray to the Lord. Good and gracious God, in your love and in your mercy, we ask you to hear and answer these prayers if they be in accordance with your will. We ask this as we do all things through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please join in singing our song for the preparation of the gifts, Seeds Scattered and Sown, on page 333. scattered and sown, wheat gathered and grown, bread broken and shed as one, the living bread of God, fine fruit of the
pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. <coughs> Look upon the offerings of the church, O Lord, as she makes her prayer to you, and grant that when consumed by those who believe, they may bring ever greater holiness through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Amen. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For in you we live and move and have our being, and while in this body, we not only experience the daily effects of your care, but even now possess the pledge of life eternal. For having received the first fruits of the Spirit, through whom you raised up Jesus from the dead, we hope for an everlasting share in the Paschal Mystery. And so with all the angels we praise you, as in joyful celebration we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church, 
and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Peter and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. Thomas. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your program in church on earth with your servant, Pope Francis Thomas, our bishop, the order of bishops and all the clergy and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O oh merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are praising to you as they are passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There, we hope to enjoy forever the, vision, the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Come give to us. 
satisfy the hungry heart with gift of finest wheat. Come, give to us, O Saviour Lord, the bread of life to eat.
We just have two announcements this evening. Number one, join us again this Tuesday at 6.30 p.m. for the Eucharist, Eucharist Talks with Deacon Jake. See the bulletin for more details. And finally, this week is your last chance to get your picture taken for the pictorial directory. Sign up online or walk-ins are welcome. Just a few things to reiterate. You know me, there's always an addendum. Give me a microphone and I'm gonna take advantage of it. Um, so Lynn Streaker asked me to announce that our photographers for the directory uh, no longer need an appointment. So now you literally have no excuse. Just walk right on in, okay? In the bulletin and on these yellow sheets that are in the narthex, uh, list all the times that they're going to be available. Uh, they'll be here uh, tomorrow from 7 to 3, Monday from 9 to 1. Uh, Tuesday from noon to 8 and so on. Uh, so get your butts over there and get your pictures taken for the directory so that we can quit announcing it. All right, we're getting real close. We got almost everyone, but there's a few delinquents as I've been calling you. So get on over there. All right, that's number one. Number two, uh, we have on this coming Tuesday night, as Hannah just announced, uh, Deacon Jake will be giving uh, another talk on the Eucharist uh, during adoration. Uh, he did one on Tuesday, and he'll do another one this Tuesday. If you weren't there on Tuesday, no problem. Uh, they kind of stand alone. But uh, do join us. I, he was, he's always very good with his preaching, but I was even more impressed than normal uh, with what he offered for us this past Tuesday. So do consider joining us uh, this coming Tuesday uh, at 6.30. Next thing, uh, in the bulletin over the past few weeks, you, you hopefully have seen uh, that I will be leaving the country soon. Don't worry, I'm coming back. Most of you are like, good riddance, get on out of here. Uh, I leave July 31st and I return, I think it's like the 12th of August, something like that. Uh, I'll be on pilgrimage and I would like to bring your prayers with me. Uh, so please uh, drop them in the collection basket, mail them to the office, drop them off at the office, whatever it is, just write it out because with my, my poor brain up here, I'll forget if you just tell me. So you gotta write it down. Carolyn can attest, you have to write everything down or Father Zach, it's like it doesn't even happen, okay? so. Please bring me your prayer intentions. And finally, uh, tonight is St. Anthony's Parish Picnic. Uh, so many of those folks over there support our picnic, and so I think we should return the favor and support theirs. Father Charles and I are heading over there for dinner right after this, and we hope to see you there. I think it's from five to who knows when. Catholics like to party, and there's a beer tent. So it'll probably keep on going and going and going, but at least till midnight, I think. So I hope to see you there. Let us pray. Having consumed these gifts, we pray, O Lord, that by our participation in this mystery, its saving effects upon us may grow through Christ our Lord. Amen. I'm sorry. I'm used to a deacon. As a reminder, too, uh, if you want to contribute to this year's mission appeal, if you didn't contribute an envelope today, uh, bring that to us in the office this week or drop it in the collection basket. And let's give our word of thanks uh, to Father Charles. Thank you, Father. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace. Thanks be to God. St. Michael, the archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the heavenly host, by the power of God, thrust into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who wander about the world seeking the ruin of souls. Amen.
i